so everyone please understand that drone simulation and control part 2 and part 3 is where actually the hover control is implemented uh, on the mambo so please watch this youtube video and then do it the next part uh, the the flow, the control is actually hardware in the loop so if you want to build the forward left and going up that is in fourth video so please watch these videos and they are fun to watch so and they are not super long they are like 10 15 minutes each video any questions online students any questions concerns so this will give you a lot of uh, additional information uh, when you do your flight code okay now next part what i'm going to talk about is uh, we i got some spare hardware that uh, some of you asked so please stop by my office i would be in my office after the class and then i would be happy to share or happy to give you the hardware so we are at the nitty gritty of flight code so let me give you uh, the the overview of what needs to happen so in last class we talked about uh, attitude controller and then running the attitude controller in inner loop and then adding the position controller but one thing i just want to clarify when you do the attitude control you have roll pitch and yaw simultaneous control of roll pitch and yaw is not possible so what you want to do is you want to implement one loop for the roll control one loop for the pitch control and for the time being you don't have to implement the yaw control but the so you will have to split that inner loop into three distinct loops just like that is explained in the webinar so once you watch the webinar video number 2 it will show you how to split the loops then we talked about the model simplification and then we talked about uh, forward motion up and down motion and then we talked about the simplification wherein how would you take a model a non linear dynamic model and linearize that and then use that to control at each sample or at each time step so the idea of linearization is you have this non linear model which is behaving non linear over entire period of uh, time but if you take a very small snapshot say running at 100 hertz 100 hertz is like 10 milliseconds which is a very short period of time then that non linear model can be approximated as the linear model and that is the key over here so these equations when you are trying to implement in the flight code they will be much much simpler because you can't implement very complicated non linear equations in flight code because that flight code is going to run in run time and you may get some divide by zero or some complicated errors or maybe multiple solutions and the the computer uh, will crash and basically your vehicle as well so that's why you want to use the linearization and then use the most simple equations that are possible so we talked about 
altitude channel model, which is used to uh, control the height. And we talked about attitude model that is used to control the roll, pitch, and yaw. And we are moving on step by step to linearization and then implementation of these models on the actual flight code. So we also talked about three types of position control. One is a set point control where you want your drone to go to a particular point. Second one is a trajectory tracking, which means you want your drone to follow a certain trajectory. And the last one is a path wherein the trajectory is parameterized in terms of some parameter gamma. And you want that drone to follow that trajectory, which is given as PD gamma. And we also talked about various implementations. Mathematically, set point control is explained as this. Mathematically, trajectory tracking is explained as this. And mathematically, the path planning controller algorithm is shown like this. Again, in our discussions, we have always talked about Euler angles because the Euler angles are easy to implement. Euler angles, they have physical interpretation. Euler angles are easy to visualize. But please try to understand, Euler angles suffer from their limitations. At 90 degree pitch, the Euler angles uh, essentially the pitch 90 degrees, you are going to get singularity and the system will throw an error. So in that case, you want to use rotation matrix or the Quaternions. Rotation matrix do not suffer from singularity. The only problem there is the number of the size that you need to store the rotation matrix is significantly larger when you perform the computation at maybe uh, 100 Hertz. So what we do is we use something like a Quaternion. Then Quaternion is a four dimensional as a number uh, thing that entire rotation matrix information. Think about the rotation matrix that we have talked about. Rotation matrices, they are three by three. So you have to store nine elements and those all nine elements need to be stored in the memory, fetched from the memory and continuously operated on. In the case of Quaternion, that all that information, which you require nine elements, is encoded only in four elements, Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So you have just four elements that need to be stored. You have just four elements that need to be propagated. And anytime you need some type of output, at that time instant, you take that Quaternion, convert into equivalent Euler angle and then plot or show the result because we cannot visualize Quaternions. Now, uh, this is one more point that I want to, I want you to see. So, so Q A R T O N I O N S, which is three blue, one brown. So what I want you to do is, if you, if you get a chance, then I would strongly recommend you to watch this video on Quaternion. Obviously I'm not gonna play- What you are looking at right now is something called Quaternion multiple. So I wouldn't go through this video. By the way, if you want to review thinking about complex numbers as a- So this is, a fantastic way to learn about Quaternions because uh, this gentleman specializes in teaching very complex mathematical concepts using movies, videos, and cartoons. So I would encourage you strongly to watch Quaternions uh, from the, uh, the, the visualization of Quaternion. And that will give you a very sound understanding of what Quaternion is, why Quaternion does not suffer from the singularity. On the other hand, Euler angles do suffer from singularity. 
and then how would you multiply and how would you propagate the quaternions so please take a look at uh, this so that will give you a good understanding of quaternion now we also talked about briefly on implementing the pid parameters but please understand the equation that i have shown here is not a scalar equation the equation that is written over here is a vector equation what does that mean by vector equation it has more scalar quantities so the control loop that were discussed in the matlab webinar are extension of this equation that is shown over here so this equation is going to give you three control loops and those three control loops are discussed in the second drone control uh, webinar of matlab so i would encourage you like and i totally understand that sometimes the theory like this is very boring but when you read the textbook or when you actually look at presentations when you look at actually people talking about it they are going to write these types of equations but practically if you want to implement these equations on flight code you cannot just take this matrix equation and dump in on the flight code because believe it or not some processors can handle matrices floating point mathematics some processors cannot handle matrices so at the end what they do is they vectorize so basically they take the matrix and they convert into vector and perform the scalar multiplications very very fast and finally put that result together in matrix so these equations even though it is given as matrix equation when you implement that on flight code you will have to convert these equations into simple equations simple algebraic equations simple multiplications simple loops that can be implemented on flight code now one thing i want to tell you that when i started working on pickhawk basically when i started working on ardu pilot the ardu pilot initially was designed for fixed wing aircraft hobby type of fixed wing aircraft it did not it was not designed for uh, uh, aircrafts like tactical type of aircraft that can do flips or that can do 90 degree pitch and so on and so forth so the if you look at ardu copter i mean sorry ardu pilot uh, you will see the repository if you look at the ardu pilot repositories in 2007 and 8 when i worked on those you will see exactly the same implementation uh, on arduino platform so the code that you will see is an arduino code and that arduino code would actually be implemented something like a simple pid type of control but since it's running very fast uh, it will work but it only used to work at that time on the fixed wing aircraft so basically the rc aircraft that are fixed wing but then gradually a uh, lot more modules got added there was ardu copter and then it started doing quad copters and all that stuff but initial ardu pilot was designed for fixed wing aircrafts and then again if you look at this implementation this is the implementation for the horizontal channel control so basically if you want to control the horizontal velocity what you have is you be, you have this equation and this equation needs to be implemented inside your flight code for your horizontal velocity control and this this idea is very simple if you want your quadcopter to go horizontally forward or horizontal laterally you just pitch or roll a little bit so that you have a component of thrust in that orientation and basically the quadcopter moves forward or goes towards left again this is not the control algorithm if you want your quadcopter to perform a very complex maneuver at that time you will have the you will have to control simultaneously roll pitch and yaw but if you just want to implement the forward flight or lateral flight 
you can just use a very simple roll or pitch maneuver and then you have the, the motion. Then we talk about uh, attitude control. There is something concept called as successive loop closure. Now I just want to explain what this successive loop closure is. So think about, and again, uh, imagine you are working on a single core processor. That single core processor is doing a lot of things. It is getting the data from the sensor. It is processing maybe complementary or Kalman filter. It's actually finding out the gains, finding out the appropriate PWMs and sending out those PWMs. So when you are trying to implement lot of things at the same time, you have to have some type of a sequence. So the processor needs to do X thing first, then Y thing, then Z thing, and it needs to follow in that process. So what is the concept of the successive loop closure? Successive loop closure means if you want to control your theta, the PID loop for theta would run first. Then you would run PID control of phi. And then you will control the PID loop of yaw. And then you will control maybe x. Similarly, you will do y. Actually, you do z first. z, then you do x, and then you do y. So what's going to happen is your control algorithm or the flight code needs to go in this direction. And that is what we mean by successive loop closure. Now, how do you know which loop to close first and which loop to close later? The most important component which will affect the stability of the quadcopter, that must be controlled first. For example, roll and pitch control, they must be part of the inner loop. Because unless you have roll stabilization, unless you have pitch stabilization, you can have some variation in yaw. So your core copter can basically yaw, but it's not, it won't fall down. Then you can have a yaw stabilization, and then you can have Z stabilization, and then you can have X, and then you can have Y stabilization. So that would achieve X. So that would achieve a controlled behavior of the quadcopter. Now, on top of this, you are going to have the trajectory of, you will have a set point control. So basically on top, the outermost will be the set point control. Out of that will be the trajectory control. Out of that would be the path control. And what should happen is the lowest in the innermost loop must run at a higher speed and as you go up the loops can run at slower speed because please understand the processor has limited amount of computational power it cannot run all the loops at 1000 hertz but the innermost loop the most critical parameter should be controlled at the highest and then depending upon the bandwidth you would actually change now what i mean by bandwidth so this is not uh, that critical in the case of quadcopters, but imagine that you are running maybe a fixed wing aircraft. So in fixed wing aircraft, the, the, the physical or the mechanical hardware will take some time to react. So basically it will take some time for pitching up of ailerons or money, controlling the elevons or some type of control surfaces. So even though you, want, you are trying to run the control loop at 100 hertz, the actuation is not going to happen at 100 hertz. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that control loop is running comparable to the actuation time. If you run control loop much, much faster than the actuation time, 
your system would become unstable i give you a very simple example imagine and and probably you will notice it if you are changing the motor speed very quickly but if the motor you do not allow motor to reach that speed then clearly your control algorithm is not going to work because before motor reaches the desired speed you would change the set point so basically the motor will not have time to react and and that can happen sometimes so you will have to add some type of time delay in some milliseconds to make sure that motor achieves that particular speed or the actuator achieves that particular speed before uh, it can be controlled yeah uh, you said that uh, you have to take care that uh, the outer loop is running at a slower top speed than the yes isn't that intuitive like isn't that time right. uh, can you give us an example of uh, the outer loop working faster than the inner loop outer loop will never uh, work faster than the inner loop however there is a different architecture watch and somebody please mute the mouse mouse i mean mute mute the mic what you can do is if you have multi core processor then you can actually do parallel process processing of the inner loops and you can run the outer for an example let me give you an example so uh, you know esp32 has two cores and you can program esp32 so that those two cores can be used you implement roll stabilization on one loop or uh, one core pitch stabilization on one loop and then have those two talk to one core and then sync the data and that way you can achieve a little bit of speed up but unless you have the data from the inner loop the outer loop would not work uh, there is one thing uh, what i have seen happening okay so sometimes depending upon the maneuver that we are doing those sequence of inner loops and outer loops would change i i give you a simple example for example if you uh, if you have a tactical aircraft wherein it's doing this crazy maneuvers okay so please understand for them to do the crazy maneuvers the control surfaces need to change very quickly but control surfaces they take time so what they do is they do something called as controlled flow separation what do i mean by control flow separation see the thing is flow separation leads to instability flow separation uh, flow separation leads to loss of lift or flow separation increases drag so what you do is you basically cause flow separation and flow separation can happen very quickly you don't need to move actuators so if you cause flow to separate and then basically make that complex maneuver but in that particular case you would want to shift the inner loop to outer loop and outer loop to inner loop otherwise the aircraft will become unstable let me give you a simple example imagine the way i am trying to control the aircraft is uh, by means of uh, uh tanad you know okay uh so i'm trying to control so have you see the let's look at a fixed wing aircraft you know the fixed wing aircraft the control surfaces are at the back on the wings control surfaces are never in the front of the wing do you agree with me mm -hmm. why they are not at the front of the wing because as soon as you add anything at the front of the wing the flow would separate right and teeny tiny amount of flow separation would actually make the aircraft unstable let me give you an example and and we tried we did this so basically you have an aircraft and what you want to do is you want this aircraft to do a sudden roll if you want the aircraft to do sudden roll you have two choices either you control uh, the ailerons that will give you the roll but that roll is not going to be sudden so instead what you do is basically you have uh, flow separators in front 
you basically raise or lower those flow separators and teeny tiny variation in the flow separators will drastically change the lift on one wing and the lift on the other wing. What would that result into? Sudden roll. That is instability. But when that aircraft rolls, all of a sudden, you take out the separation and fire the ailerons to stabilize the aircraft. So for an example, uh, F-16 is inherently unstable aircraft. So you will be controlling the flow separation, supersonic aircraft, flow separation, super important. Uh, uh, so you would see, and, and that, where does the flow separation occur? How the flow separation occurs? That is usually a, a secret trade, uh, not, it's actually a classified secret. So if you go ask a Boeing engineer, oh, tell me where the flow separation patterns are or what are flow separation devices, you will not find that information on any of the manuals because those are part of the tactical uh, aircraft uh, design. So if you take a course in uh, uh, aeroelasticity, second course in aeroelasticity, tactical aircraft design, you will see those uh, uh, flow separation devices. So, yeah, question? So you said that there are situations in which you might need to alter the... Yes. The control that sometimes the outer, uh, the outer loop so the inner the outer loop which was which was running at slower speed mm -hmm. now needs to run at a higher speed and that gets moved in. Yes, I was I was uh, curious as to how to implement such a uh, So for that, what, okay, actually, <laughs> since you asked, what you have is you have something called as the state flow diagrams. Uh, did you do MATLAB uh, uh, webinar? Did I ask you to do MATLAB webinar on state flow? Yeah. So yeah. So basically, uh, the state flow. So what you will do is you will have states. So essentially, you would have a block wherein you would implement one set of uh, uh, sequence of loops. You would have the other block where the, that will be the other set of sequence where the outer loop and inner loop, they are flipped. And then depending upon the maneuver or what you're trying to do is you'll actually jump onto this or then jump onto this. So basically you would flip the states. So uh, state, you can, uh, yeah, the, the control loops that we talked about or the flight code that we talked about can be implemented with state, state flow diagrams. But I would encourage you to look at the webinar of the state flow and flight code implementation using the state flow. Now, here is the issue. And this is a very common issue. So whenever you use PID, PID is basically a simple multiplication and that's gonna give you number. Now, whether that number is going to be meaningful or not depends upon your engineering judgment. Many a times what happens is, the values that are computed that are beyond the capacity of the sensor. That's why, now this is the point. Remember when you had the motor mixing block, after the motor mixing block, there was a saturation. Why there was a saturation? Because the motor PWM or basically the motor counts or this control signal to the motor cannot exceed more than 400 counts. So if your PID, say is generating more than 400, that is going to saturate the motor. And sometimes the controller can, the uh, controller hardware can take care of more counts. What it does is, is it has some internal A to D, but many a times on small uh, uh, microcontrollers, you need to have those counts within certain range. Otherwise the processor will throw an error or there will be a runtime execution error. That's why what you want to do is after your PID control, you want to add the saturation and this saturation bounds are dependent on the hardware that you are using. So that's why in our MATLAB code, at the end of the motor mixing algorithm, you have a saturation. Next part is, and this is what you have seen. Remember the motor mixing algorithm that we talked about? 
that is what is meant by the control allocation control allocation is you have some u of t how is this u of t control is implemented on the practical hardware so that that hardware can do what you really want to do so remember that motor mixing block that we talked about remember the arrows that is all that now uh, you will need you will need to think about how to mix channels or how to add different combinations of channels what would be the proportions of mixing and all those questions are answered based on first of all looking at the hardware capacity looking at the mathematical model looking at the experimental results and so on so i believe it or not uh, in early versions of quadcopter this is the control of allocation that is implemented for the plus type of quadcopter for us the control allocation is going to be different because we have x type of configuration and the control allocation matrix for the x type of configuration is discussed in the drone video number 2 so he actually talks about what would be this control mixing matrix that needs to be implemented on the flight code so for this i would encourage you to look at matlab drone uh control video series and believe it or not this is exactly what we studied when we studied dynamics of the drone then how would you implement the control allocation that control allocation is basically is relating the speed of the motor to the thrust that is generated by each motor so basically what you do is you implement these scale factors scale factors or parameters that would relate the motor speeds to the amount of thrust that you are trying to achieve now motor control this is another thing and you really don't have to worry about it but that is implemented in inside so you so right now what you have is actually let me put it this way you want your motor to run at say 1000 rpm and your motor is running at 500 rpm do you agree with me what you want to do is you will have this motor controller that will change the motor speed from 500 rpm to 1000 rpm but unfortunately motor controller will not take the motor from 500 to 1000 and stop what would happen is the motor controller just like pid would actually take it to maybe a, a 1002 then bring it back to 998 go back to 1001 bring it back to 999 and finally it would settle down to 1000 so what it means is there will be some settling time required for the motor control as well so you have your pid the pid is this uh, gets sent to a motor controller but the motor controller has itself its own time constant its own pid controls to achieve the appropriate speed in a given possible time everyone understood this so that actually adds again to the group delay so you need to take that into account so there is some controller time that is needed so uh what i want to show you this is actually uh, uh something that is built in inside matlab uh i may or may not have time for doing this uh but this is actually this concept is discussed in drone video Four, drone matlab video four. So wherein this is actually the model based design where you can load the frame and have it go through the sequence of position module, attitude, uh, attitude module, control allocation, and then you have the plant module. 
So this is basically the model based design of the quadcopter. So once you study the, those drone videos, uh, wherein what happens is you can actually change the Mambo parameters and then actually see that Mambo is behaving in certain fashion and then actually program the Mambo with a flight code. And I promise you, your actual Mambo will behave exactly like simulation. I did that and I was pretty amazed with the things that you can achieve. So I would encourage you to do that. And the last slide, uh, the controller design is very interesting. There are linear controls, there are nonlinear controls. As far as robotics uh, two is concerned, we will be focusing on the nonlinear uh, on the linear control. In next few slide, next few lessons, I will try to teach you some advanced topics in uh, robotics two on the quadcopter. Uh, please understand this material. Uh, you don't have formal lab or project or uh, uh, any work, but this is purely for. A knowledge base. So if you are interested in trying to apply for jobs in the robotics area, uh, then this material is going to be very important. And what I'm trying to do is, this is important announcement that I want to make for all the students that uh, I don't know if you have looked at something called as Paolo Air. So let me uh, sh share my screen. Uh, so so the the I'm going to invite uh, Pablo Air. So Pablo Air is the company. Uh, they compete with Parrot, French company, and DJI. So basically, they have opened a new office in uh, in here in Phoenix. So I'm going to invite their lead engineers, and they are looking to hire. Drone designers, drone engineers, so Paolo Air Phoenix. And please understand that uh, they recently came to Phoenix and they want to focus on the drone delivery. And they have a lot of quite a few internships and uh, other positions open, uh, full time positions open. So I'm going to invite uh, their lead engineer and I would announce that in the class. So I know most of you are attending the class uh, online, but I would strongly encourage you that during his seminar, please come to class because uh, honestly, it doesn't look good that if you have only 10, 12 students in the class, when we invite external guests. And uh, after the presentation, I will try to uh, see that if you can, uh, you can have one-on-one -on -one time uh, with, with that gentleman. So, so robotics to whatever knowledge you are getting, uh, you would be able to use to find jobs and internships. So, but look at Paolo, uh, and I think Pablo here hiring. I saw the, the internship positions, yeah. Uh, careers info, Paolo. So look it up. So, uh, with this, what I'm going to do is um, we have completed uh, the major part of the course. And now what we are left with is some advanced topics and then uh, essentially the projects and then uh, working on the actual hardware platform. So I would be here and I would be helping you with your hardware platform and maybe doing uh, helping you with the coding or if you need some additional help on debugging your code. Uh, but I just want to give you a couple of hints. Um, so you are, you should look at, you should go to MATLAB. Go to MATLAB and so let me show you. You should look at the, the example files for the Mambo because the task that you are 
trying to do those tasks are already implemented in matlab code so i uh, let me give you some hints so go to simulink and then go to simulink support files for parrot mini drone if you want to look at the the code generation the the hover this is actually the whole template for the hover so if you want to achieve a stable hover what you can do is you can actually open this template look at the way the prds are implemented you don't have to run this as a project uh they run this as a project just to organize the whole thing properly but at the end what you need is you just need the flight code and this is what is used in the matlab webinar so you can actually go to this uh, hover control so you don't need visualization what you do is you basically i'll show you what flight code to look at So what we are going to implement in your MATLAB is you don't need signal builder. What you need is basically you don't. As a matter of fact, you don't need the airframe. You don't need visual visualization visualization block. What you need is this flight code. Go inside. and it will open the exact same code that you are working on so basically you would actually use some of this code you can actually directly you can directly grab and place this code in in the program that that you are working on so the the thing is here the estimated states you can estimate those using complementary filter right they are actually implementing this using the kalman filter so you can implement this using the complementary filter so please look at this flight code and you can use this uh, the flight code and then actually modify this accordingly so i would strongly recommend you to use this as a reference Uh, you actually don't need path planning we are not doing path planning we are just going to do a simple hover control so lot of these blocks uh you can discard so i would encourage you to take a look at this the other thing which i want to show you uh so which is again So you have a lot of resources, by the way. So if you want to look at, there is another block, which is the you can use. You are not using image, so you can use this code generation template, and then you can actually. Mod, we started modifying this, so all those additional blocks that we talked about will actually sit over here, and those get will get fed to this motor mixing block. So, please try to work on those. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. And uh, we have about three weeks, so there are going to be, I mean, again, two or three mini assignments. so and i will actually discuss those assignments in next class but to just to give you hints uh once you are done with your hover then we are going to in first you should finish roll and pitch stabilization then you should finish the hover then you should finish the forward x and y and then finally uh if there is time then you can think about adding some type of uh, a straight line following so path following and if you want some hints in how to do that please there is another webinar 
matlab mini drone competition so so if you look at this matlab mini drone competition this act so basically this is the whole sequence it will actually walk you through uh, the different code that you can achieve to uh, get the the line following so this matlab mini drone competition will actually explain you step by step how to change the code the flight code to achieve uh, the straight line following so there are a lot of resources uh, that you can use to finish uh, your small tasks okay uh, that's it for today i'm going to stop here